It's likely you've heard or played the game Sudoku at least once in your lifetime. To play, one must fill out a 9x9 grid of squares so that no number is repeated in the same row, column, or 3x3 box. If you're able to fill out every cell on the Sudoku board without duplicates, congrats, you win the game. But there's another game that you might have a bit more trouble with, the game of tech interviews. Although not a pure indicator of development skill, technical interviews are part of almost every big tech company's interview process. So it's important to know the concepts these interviews present so you can pass with flying colors and get the job of your dreams. One interview preparation question that I think is quite helpful is question number 36 on the tech interview problem site leak code called Valid Sudoku. This question asks that we write a program that determines whether or not a given Sudoku board is valid, meaning no row, column, or box has a duplicate number 1 through 9. I like this question since it brings up some good development related concepts to learn and master, including traversing a 2D array and native JavaScript sets. It also acts as a precursor to the more advanced Sudoku problem, Sudoku Solver, which uses an algorithmic technique called backtracking to programmatically solve an unfinished Sudoku board. We'll get there with time, but first, let's focus on the base problem of validating a Sudoku board. To validate a Sudoku board, first we must understand how to loop through a multi-dimensional array. What is a multi-dimensional array? Well, it's just an array that contains arrays. Wow. Don't overcomplicate it. In our case, this array of arrays represents our Sudoku board. So the first thing we need to do is ensure that every row is duplicate free. To select every row, we can create a simple for loop that loops through each item within our main rows array. Then we can add another for loop inside of it that runs once for however many items there are within each row. In our case, our Sudoku board is nine rows by nine columns large. So we're looping through each row nine times. Now we can use this new for loop index to grab each item within the row, effectively allowing us to scan and analyze whether or not there are any duplicates. To track for duplicates, we can use a JavaScript set, a native array-like JavaScript object that only stores unique values. By creating a row set, scanning a particular row, then adding each value into our set, we can determine whether or not an item already exists in a row, ending the function altogether if so. But if no duplicate was found, we can wipe our set's contents completely, move on to the next row, and then do the exact same thing, checking for any duplicates that may be in the current row. If no duplicates were found for all nine rows, we know our Sudoku board is valid for our rows. Which brings us on to checking whether or not our board is valid for columns. To check that our column values are unique, we can keep things as is, we just need to change the way we're accessing our 2D array's values. By selecting our initial rows array, we can use our second for loops iterator as our initial index. Since J will be changing nine times, once for each item within a row, we can use it to iterate through each row continuously. Now we can use our first for loops iterator, I, to select a particular column from these rows we're looping over. J will iterate through one at nine, and then we'll continue on to the next iteration of our first for loop, which will change i, which in return will move our column over by 1, allowing us to select the new set of values. Just like we did for rows, we create a new set for our columns and check whether or not we already looped over a particular number. If so, the Sudoku board is invalid, so we return false. Otherwise, we clear the set and continue on to the next column. If all nine columns are found to be valid, our board can be declared valid for both rows and columns. All that's left is to check for duplicates within the 3x3 boxes. To check for duplicates within the 3x3 boxes, we need to push our row down once every time we've iterated over three items. By flooring j divided by 3, we can achieve exactly that. Then, we need a way to iterate through our columns three items at a time. We can do this by getting the remainder of j divided by 3 using the modulo operator. Here you can see as j increases towards 9, our result is always iterating through 0 and 2, giving us the item selection format we need. However, this code will only ever rotate through the first box within our grid, so we need to add some code that pushes our box to the right as our row changes. If we multiply the current row value, represented by i, by 3, then modulo it by 9 to get the remainder, we can effectively space out our value selection by 3s depending on what row we're on. Here, if we're on the first row, we get a remainder of 0, so nothing is added. 
but if we're on row one, we get a remainder of three after dividing by nine. So we push our selection over to the right by three, while our J modulo three code continues to iterate by three items at a time. This will continue the pattern as we continue through our loops, but we still have an issue where this pattern isn't actually being pushed downwards to check the additional 3x3 boxes below. To push our item scanning down, we need to head back to the first dimension in our array where we're determining how to select which row we're on. Here we can add on a math.floor that floors the value of i divided by 3, so if we reach the second set of row boxes, this value will be 1. And if we reach the third set, this value will be 2. 1 and 2 aren't enough to push our box down by 3 items, so we need to make sure that we multiply this result by 3 to get the desired effect. Finally, we can add another set into our algorithm, check for the looped over characters, and clear our set at the end of each successful validation check. If no duplicates were found for our rows, columns, and boxes, we return true since we can definitively say the Sudoku board is indeed valid. So hopefully that helps a little bit in regards to traversing a 2D array and also learning a little bit more about JavaScript sets. I know it can be really hard to land a job in today's competitive environment, so hopefully seeing how these algorithms actually work from a visual standpoint really helps you when it comes down to actually passing those interviews. So depending on how this video goes, next up we'll be continuing this question by creating an algorithm that actually solves the Sudoku board rather than just validate it. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.